I need to grab a hold of my sins. I need to take responsibility for my sins, not to make excuses. Well, you know, I might have. I was amazed to come across recently St. Teresa of Avila when she was writing about the spiritual life in her book called The Interior Castle. In those three first mansions, those first three stages of the spiritual life, there's almost nothing from, from like one of the masters of the spiritual life. She mentions almost nothing about prayer. It was all about the whole thing pretty much is about getting sin out of your life. If you are on the South Pole, and you want to get to the North Pole. There's no way to get to the North Pole unless you get further and further away from the South Pole. And in fact, the furthest point from the South Pole, we call it the North Pole. <laughs> so you know <laughs> that when you get to the North Pole, you really, you couldn't be further. It's like that with, with sin and God. It's impossible to say, oh, no, 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 I love God when you're totally loving sin as well. Now, there's a journey in this, okay, so sometimes you're at the equator, you know, and there's there's still sin in your life, and you're not there at the unit of way yet, but you're on the way, so there's a whole lot less sin. Getting closer to God necessarily means getting further away from sin. It's all well and good to say, oh, I was praying this way and that way, but if we don't actually get down to getting rid of habits, evil habits and, and sin in our life, then we're in trouble. The best tool, the best gift that God has given us for getting rid of sin is, of course, confession. All right, so you go to a priest, you make an, a, a confession, you tell him your sins with sorrow for those sins, and he forgives you. He gives you absolution. He can't, of course, as a man forgive you, but Jesus through him and through his ordination, Jesus himself is the one who forgives you. As with all of, of the sacraments, the grace available in confession is objectively infinite because it's Jesus doing his thing. He never gives a little bit. He gives everything of himself. So in every confession, there is infinite grace. But the grace that you might receive yourself in a given confession depends on your receptivity, on how well you are disposed to receive those graces. So not just the grace of the forgiveness of sin, which will happen so long as you confess uh, your sins, you're sorry for them, you have a firm purpose amendment. That means you're committed to to trying to not, not uh, do those sins again. And the priest is a validly ordained priest and he gives you absolution. So long as all of those, those things are in there, your sins are forgiven. Okay, so that grace can be obtained and you can be clear about that. But then there's a whole lot other, <laughs> an infinitely huge amount of extra grace beyond that for your growth in holiness and union with God. And you can get so much more if we work on our disposition, how well we are prepared to receive all of this grace, to open ourselves up to the maximum so that we don't miss what God wants to give to us and do in us. If we are giving our sins to Jesus in confession, then we first need to take hold of them. You can't give what you haven't got. I need to grab a hold of my sins. I need to take responsibility for my sins, not to make excuses. Well, you know, I might have. Uh, oh, no. If you did it, just say, I, I, some people say, I accuse myself of the following sins. That's good. It's taking responsibility. It's a grow up. You know, you're not five years old anymore. You're not eight years old anymore, unless you are. <laughs> In which case, great job. Keep going. Uh, you know, I presume you're an adult. So act like an adult. Take responsibility. Great pathway to freedom begins with just take responsibility. This sin here, this is mine, and I hate that I did it, and I'm so sorry. Boom. When you go in, get the big ones out first. Priest isn't going to be, oh my gosh, shocked. He's going to be delighted. Confession, a good confession should be messy. You should be making a mess in there of just like confession, really, really honest of all, all the mess. In order to do that, you need to examine your conscience. You need to know before you go in there, you know, and not just, uh, oh, no, you know, on the fly trying to remember you know, a month's worth of, of thing, mistakes and sins. No, be prepared. So at least, you know, a few minutes before the confession, sit down and go, okay, what's on my heart? What's on my soul? What do I need to be reconciled about? Above that is every day to make some sort of examination of conscience before you go to bed. Look back over your day. And there's different ways you could do this. Uh, some people use, you know, get themselves an examination of conscience, you know, with the maybe the Ten Commandments or the Capital Sins or something, go through it and say, okay, was there any that I fell in? Even just looking back over your day, you know, morning, was raining major, don't think so, e afternoon, oh, evening, sometimes it gets worse in the evening, oh. just back over your day. Uh, a thing that I love to use is uh, what I call like a lens. It's like I look back through the day through a, a lens and, and this would be a question I ask myself. Something like, did I live today 
for love of God. And I look at the morning, did I live the morning for love of you, God? And if there's some selfishness in there, it'll start to pop up based on that. So that's what there's, you could use it. Did I live today out of fear or out of love? You know, there's all sorts of different angles you could, you could take it depending on your, your own particular needs or tastes. So that's another way that we can make an examination of conscience. However you do that, uh, whether it's, you know, once a day or once a week or, you know, 15 minutes before you make your confession, I do recommend you write them down, especially if you're doing the daily one, just so you can remember them, so you can then give them give them back to the Lord. The other step I, I do recommend is even if you're like not going to go to confession and for another two weeks, make an act of sorrow, with, like say sorry to the Lord for, for your sins. We could be in danger when we do maybe a regular examination of conscience of getting a bit mechanical to know, oh, that thing, yeah, and that thing there. No, these, were, these are things that have damaged my relationship with Jesus. I want to say sorry to him right now. I want to stir up contrition, is what it's called. Sorrow for my sins. I want to stir that up because the more you stir it up, that's actually a big part of how prepared and how ready you are to receive the grace, how receptive your soul is to receive the grace when you actually get to confession. And you can actually even receive it right now when you make this act of contrition. So again, don't just like recite, I'll say, you know, oh my God, I thank you for loving me. Don't just say an act of contrition. Like just speak to him from your heart. You know, if, if it's a set prayer, great, but... Make it from the heart. Make it a heartfelt, a real sorrow for, for the mistakes, for the ways you have offended God. And lastly, ask for the grace. None of us can be holy without his help. It's his work in us. So just humble yourself and, oh Lord, I can't do this on my own. I can't do this on my strength. Apart from you, I can do nothing. But I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So Lord, please help me. Please give me the grace to make a great confession. Please help me to examine my conscience. Please help me to never sin. I don't ever want to sin or offend you, God. Please help me because without you, I'm a I'm a gunner. How to get more out of confession. I went a bit Scottish there. Let's try that again. All right, perhaps that's been helpful. God bless you. <laughs> I hope I hit record. <laughs>